Please pay attention to some of the videos that I'm about to show right now, which are other videos from my YouTube channel of species that get the most views and people consider them to be the most beautiful. There we go. Did you notice something? All of them have these strange tail-like appendages on their hind wings. Which is exactly what we are going to talk about today. We are going to talk about why moths have tails. Because there are several kinds of moths uh, that have developed, developed these strange kind of tail-like appendages on their hind wings. So why is this? Let's find out. Alright people. First, before you will be able to understand what exactly is going on here in this evolutionary tale, we need to have a deeper understanding of the worst enemy of most big moth species. They are of course... Bats. Bats and moths have confronted each other for millions of years. In fact, bats are one of the biggest selective pressures on the survival of moths in the wild. Most species of them are completely insectivorous, and though yes, there are exceptions, I'm not an expert, I study insects, not mammals, but I know bats are a big deal for moths. One, they have been causing high rates of mortality for a long time, and in fact, there are many species that have specific um, anti-bat adaptations. And in fact, having tails on their hind wings is one of them. Because first we need to know how to locate bats, which are considered to be nearly blind, although that's incorrect, they can see, but not as well as uh, most mammals can, because of course they're nocturnal. Bats, they rely on echolocation. I think most of you all of you will notice. Echolocation means that bats, em basically, they emit ultrasonic sounds. Um, in fact, these sounds, uh, humans cannot hear them because they are not in the audible spectrum of sounds. But uh, what bas bats basically do is they emit ultrasonic waves and this ultrasound will reach their victim. And that's, of course, a beautiful drawing of moths. And what happens if these sound waves reach their target? Um, well, basically, they bounce back from the surface of the insect. They return to the bat. And then the bat will know that there is potential food or another object flying here. And because these sound waves, they bounce off the surface of the moth, and because of that, the bat will know the general shape of the object he is trying to capture in complete darkness. Now you may be asking, how exactly do tails, um, you know, how do tails come into this story? Well, I'll get to that first. So first let's trace the moth. So basically what, what the bat will see is like silhouette of the insect. Very schematic, but okay, you get the point. Let's give him a smiley on its thorax, but all right. This is what the bat will see because of reflecting sound waves. Basically the silhouette um, of the insect in the complete darkness. All right, let's repeat the entire process. But this time it's going to be a moth species that has beautiful hind wings on its tail. Like this beautiful dead specimen of Eudaimonia from Africa. A silk moth from the Saturnidae family 
It has hind wings with extremely long tails. Which are also one of the anti-predator adaptations that I'm talking about. One thing there is that you need to know first. Because tails in flight um, have one unique property. And this is going to be very important. Just pay attention to this little video I've made of one of my comet moths. Take a good look. Did you notice something? When moths with, with tails fly, these tails actually rotate a lot in flight. Now this is important. This is very important to know. Because these rotating tails are going to give us the answer that we seek. Now one thing I explained in my previous video is when a moth emits waves of sound they will reach the target and what happens next is these sound waves will reach the insect its enemy and what happens next is these sound waves they bounce off the surface of this insect and are reflected back to the bat who is then able to make up a sort of silhouette of the insect that's basically how it works however there is one thing that uh, I forgot to tell you because the surface of this insect is not consistent because you see its tails are spinning around so when the sound waves uh, that the bat emits when they reach the moth actually it still could be in this position it still could be in this position it still could be in this position it, anything anywhere along the axis along which it spins for example, the hind wing is spinning around, it moves like this. And you will notice that these tails they spin so rapidly, they cover a large surface in a short time. So, when these sound waves reach the tails of the moth, the surface they are going to reflect off is anywhere anywhere in the range of these tails. This is important because if the moth of, or if the bat is going to see a silhouette of this insect then it's not going to look like this. Alright, it's not a beautiful drawing but try it's not going to look like this it's going to look like this this is the entire area where its tails could be it's going to see this big object and this makes it very hard for the for the bat basically to focus its attention because what it would see is basically this entire area covered by the tails Reflecting back the sound waves, it works like an, uh, an auditory reflector that bounces back sound. Now it's going to see the general shape of this insect and all this stuff behind it. Which is extremely confusing and it will make it very hard for the bat to find the center of mass for this insect. So if a moth like this... had tails on his hind wings a bat would basically see him like this because these tails are rapidly 
spinning around and covering this entire area reflecting back all the all the ultrasonic waves and this makes it a much bigger target a bigger object and now if the bat is going to attack it anywhere it's going to find the center of mass which would be here I mean this is the biggest surface so if you want to attack a target you're going to attack its biggest surface and what you're going to do is you're going uh, well he's going after the tails in fact and that's exactly what the moth wants it to do because these tails have the ability to break off so the, mo the bat will be unsuccessful in uh, killing the moth because it will be allowed to escape basically because uh, the moth of the, or the bat will have uh, much difficulty locating the actual body and wings of the moth um, and the actual center of mass of the insect because his image has been completely distorted to predators and now this is the main uh, reason why moths have tails on their hind wings it is generally an anti-bat adaptation although like I said these tails they can break off I mean if I took this moth out of its uh, cellophane I could probably break these tails they are very thin they break off very easy so if I were to grab it by the tail it would only lose a hind wing tail which perhaps sucks for the moth but it will not kill it in fact it would allow it to escape in the same way that lizards drop their tails when you grab them by the tail I mean it sucks for a lizard to lose its tail but it's not fatal they can recover from it and it's the same with a moth these tails they, are, they break off but they also distort the entire image which makes the moth uh, which makes the bats that are trying to eat them basically miss their target most of the times that was just a quick explanation Thank you for watching and I hope you all uh, if you like this video and now have a deeper understanding of this process.